Uh, east area is uh, negative. Uh, we're proceeding west along the border. Roger, Air One. Well, maybe you went straight south into Mexico. The plane's been missing for almost eight hours. Let's face it, she's a widow. Yeah, I'll tell her. Uh huh. The, the minute we hear anything, okay. Yeah, thanks for calling. Bye. That was Aunt Emily from San Francisco. She wanted to know if we'd heard anything. Joanne called her. Mike Danvers and Will Barrett. I wonder if we should make some coffee. Oh, for heaven's sake, Mother, there's enough coffee. I'm sorry. I, I don't know how you can be so calm. It's a lot of practice. Hi, Sal. Any news, anything at all? Nothing at all. Jessica, you remember Mike, Mr. Barrett. Hello, Hi, it's been a while. Uh, can I get you some coffee? No, I'd like some, thanks. Sounds good. I'll, I'll just be a second. Well, is there any radio signals or anything? Nothing, and Tom didn't file a flight plan. Sally, there's still a good chance that he'll be found, but... But that's not why you came. I understand you want to remove any classified material. This is the key to the desk drawer, and this is the key to the filing cabinet. You were expecting us? Of course. You or somebody else. This is Mrs. Bingham. What did you do out there today, Frank? Yeah, the salmon are gone, but we did fine. Ah, if I turn it up, I should have get the fish. Hurry up. Come on, hurry up. Scratch out salmon and right in ling cod on the menu, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, we'll poach some and saute the rest. No, no, we're going to broil most of them and make chipino out of the rest. As a matter of fact, I'm going to broil some right now. You do everything else. Huh? Hey, hey, half back. Yeah. You, you don't pay me big bucks for my enchiladas, you know? You know, you Tang, when I retired, I bought this restaurant because I couldn't get my fish cooked right. Well, I'm going to fix lunch right now, right here, for me today, okay? My mother told me i end up a, a salad chef. <laughs> Mr. Cannon? Yeah. I'm here to see you. Uh, after lunch, huh? She's kind of cute. Her name's Bingham. Says she knows you. Mr. 
Mr. Cannon. Hi, I'm Jessica Bingham. Hey, Jessica. My, this is so nice. Well, you know, the last time I saw you, you had a ponytail and a boyfriend who combed his hair all the time. I look at you now. My goodness, aren't you pretty? Huh? Well, how have you been? How are your mother and father? My father's dead. When? What happened? They, they say that he killed himself. What? No, I know it's not true. I tried to call you, and they said that you were due back today. I don't know who else to talk to. Ah, uh, darling. Never, never would have taken that way out, no matter what his problems were. Yeah, but remember, your dad lived with a lot of pressure. 20 years with the CIA, a lot of it clandestine. I can take his toll, you know. I know, but, but he was happy with his retirement. I mean, he was raising prize horses. He had a good life. What does your mother think? Oh, you know, the old soldier's wife. She accepts the official version of everything. <laughs> but not you, huh? Frank, I have a right to know what happened to my father. Yes. Yes, you do. Does your mother know you came up here? No. no. I, I think she wanted to call you, but she couldn't. I, I can understand why. Oh? know that you and mother were lovers or whatever before she married dad. Jessica, for our generation, that, or whatever, is important. But you were, weren't you? We were, uh, very close. And your father was my best friend. I know. That's why I came to you. He knew him. No one else will listen to me. I'm listening. My father did not commit suicide. No matter what anyone says, I will never believe that. I think someone killed him. I mean, last week we were talking. He was making plans for my graduation party. Would my father commit suicide a few days before my graduation? Your dad and I were working out of Rome, G2. Uh, military intelligence, after the war. <laughs> That's where I developed my fatal lust for pasta. <laughs> yeah, your mother was working for a foreign aid operation in Rome. Who discovered her? Well, I met her and your father married her. Any bad feelings? Your dad knew what he wanted. No, no bad feelings. Family, kids, your mother wanted the same thing. How about regret? <laughs> no regrets about anything. But uh, seeing you, <laughs> Maybe a little. <laughs> Hi, Jess. Hi, Kurt. I'd like you to meet an old friend of Dad's. Frank Cannon, Dr. Curtis McDonald. How are you, sir? I guess you could say I'm a new friend of Tom's. I only knew him a year. Fine man. Yes. Were you his doctor? <laughs> his horse doctor. Oh. I'm a vet. As a matter of fact, I'm here on a maternity call. Your uh, chestnut mare is just about ready to fall. Dad and Kurt were breeding horses together. Uh, I'd like to talk to you later, if it's all right with you. Well, sure, anytime. Good. Kurt, I, I feel that I should explain that Frank is a detective. Oh, I see. I wondered. Tell your mother I'll be back in just a little while. Nice to meet you, Mr. Cannon. Thank you. Same to you. Kurt's been a lot of support to Mom since this happened. Matter of fact, I think he's always had a little case on her, but he's... Too shy to let it show.
tell them it's here. It's sure a beautiful place. Yes. It was a good life, it really was. And I really like Jessica. <laughs> She's a bright and spunky kid, like somebody I knew once. I noticed you watching her. What were you thinking? You know what I was thinking. That she was the daughter you might have had. Yeah. <laughs> it reminded me of the old joke. She got your brains, but what if she had gotten my looks? <laughs> Frank. Yeah. I've really missed you these years. I'm sorry we couldn't have been closer. All of us, I mean. I want to... No, I've got to say a couple of things. We'll both feel better when they're said, and that will be the last of it. I, uh... I've loved you. I don't think I ever loved a woman more. But you married a fine man. I told Jessica on the way over that I had no regrets. Well, that's not entirely true, but it's close. You did the right thing. Marrying Tommy Bingham was no mistake. Thank you. Now, you let go of the past, huh? I'm here because Jessica doesn't believe that Tom committed suicide. That kind of thing used to be my business, and I was... No, I am damn good at it. So I want to help. Do you want me to help? I don't know. I... I don't want everything churned up. You mean you've sat on secrets all your life, you and Tom, and it's hard to change, huh? Yes, maybe... Maybe that's all it was. Forgive me, but I don't believe that's all it is. I think there's something else. You want to tell me about it? It's possible that Tom was having an affair. I find that hard to believe. Even harder for me. This is a tight little community. The horsey set, one hears things. Like what? Like a woman, Alana Richardson, very wealthy, very attractive. Had a share of husbands, hers and others. A couple of months ago, Tom said he had to go on a little trip. I found out later it was Costa Rica, but he didn't want to talk about it. Costa Rica? Sounds like agency business. I thought he was retired. He was, but then so are you. It seems that Alana Richardson was in Costa Rica at the same time. Sally, it may mean nothing. Let me look into it. You will anyway, won't you? He was my friend. <sighs> Sal, you've got to let go sometime. I can't. I don't know how. years waiting for him to come back night after night something froze inside me then when Tom retired I thought it was all over fear began to go away I began to feel again now promise me if there was an affair You'll find a way to keep it from Jessica. I didn't think this generation cared about things like that. Oh, you'd be surprised. She idolized her father. I love Tom very much. He wasn't my hero, he was my husband. Enough, enough. <laughs> when I retired, I promised to change my ways and become the lean and wiry, heroic figure that every heavyset man has inside him. I failed dismally, of course, but I still have the resolution. Hey, it was a marvelous dinner, Sally. Thank you very much. Not every day you get a chance to cook for a famous restaurant. 
<laughs> oh, and I love it, too. It keeps me off the streets. But it's really no big deal as a restaurant. I, I've seen it, Mother. He's right. Hey, listen, you. What kind of a brat did you raise here? Hey! We made her laugh. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. Both of you. I'm glad you're here, Frank. Thank you. But not for the same reason that Jessica brought you. I still don't think there's anything to investigate. Oh, come on, Mother. You know there's something wrong. No, I don't know that. Well, I, I just refuse to accept things the way you do. Like those men just marching in here and ransacking his desk. And Daddy... Do you realize that they didn't even know if Daddy was dead yet? Who were the men? Wilson Barrett and Mike Danvers, two former CIA agents. Tom belonged to a group. I suppose you could call it a club. Former agency men who live in the area. They meet once a month for lunch and keep in touch. Daddy used to call them the Old Spooks Club. Very well named. They are very fine men and were very good friends of your father's. When they heard that he was missing, they came over here to see if there was any classified information in the house. You know how it works. Well, I don't know how it works, and I don't care. They had no right to come in here, and you had no right to let them in here. Okay, Jessica, they had no right, okay? I'm sorry. Sally. Ten minutes late. Isn't he a beauty? A little cold. Yeah, I must admit he's pretty cute. <laughs> you like horses, Mr. Cannon? I like them at six to one. <laughs> Wish Tom could have lived to see this. Would have made him awfully happy. Doc, what was Tom's state of mind during the past few weeks? Well, I'm a veterinarian, so I guess I know more about horses than I do about people. But if you want my opinion, I'd say that he was under an emotional strain. Did it have anything to do with the Richardson woman? Oh, you've heard about that. Well, I don't listen to gossip. Too much of it in a community like this. Was it gossip, Doc? <laughs> Come on, Doc. Tom was a mutual friend of ours. Level with me, will you? I don't know. Well, Anna Richardson is quite a woman. Well, even a decent man can make a fool of himself sometimes. OK, thanks. You know, if you start asking questions like that around here, a lot of people might be hurt by it. Not as hurt as Tom. No, of course not. I, um... I'm having a lot of trouble with this. No? I still don't understand. Why Tom, having left that other world behind him, and having created this whole new, beautiful life around him, why he would suddenly choose to leave it. That question I can answer. He didn't choose to leave it. He was taken from it. Because he didn't commit suicide. He was murdered. Murdered? What can I do to help? Thanks, Doc. I'm not even sure what I can do to help. But I'm sure as hell gonna try. Jimmy.
I know. You're thinking of buying one just like it. Out. I'm from Mel's garage. You the guy that called? No. Out. Well, somebody did. Said they were locked out of their car. How interesting. Mel's garage, huh? That's right. Uh, I'm the night man. I got the call myself about 10 minutes ago. Yeah? The fella described that car there. You always carry a walkie-talkie around with you? The tow truck's down tonight. No radio. Listen, friend, you a, a cop? Just an uptight citizen, or what? No, I'm just the curious type. Especially when somebody breaks into my car in the middle of the night, says he's a mechanic, but doesn't have any grease on his hands or overalls. Look, friend, I don't know what your problem is. Why don't we go call my boss, you talk to Mel. Why don't you go back and tell Mel's garage that whoever sent you made a big mistake? Because I'm here to stay. Now you get the hell out of here. <laughs> You know Tom Bingham. Long enough to miss him. Long time. Yeah. I know the family. They're nice people. I gather they're having a hard time accepting the suicide, huh? Yeah. Huh. Who's that? Lana Richardson. It's her spread, as far as you can see. Everybody knows her. Do you have horses out here? No. Flew in and out. Well, somebody did. There was a horse grazing here. You can see where he was feeding, and it was recently because the grass hasn't had time to grow back yet. Well, it could have been hundreds of those guys from the CIA. Who? Oh, which guys from the CIA? Mr. Barrett and some other guy. They came out here with me once. They went all through Bingham's place, too. Said something about a question of national security. Now, those people aren't with the CIA anymore. They don't have authority. Yeah, well, you tell them that. Look, Mr. Barrett is very well-known, very well-respected around here. He plays golf with my chief. Oh, that's very nice. Who, oh, Prince? Going in, going out. Come here, look at this. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's one going in. And there's one going out. I thought the hoof prints going out are deeper than the ones coming in, which means that one man rode in and two men rode out on the same horse. Maybe. 
Where are you going with this? Somebody was waiting here for that plane. Okay, who? Whoever killed Tom. Now, wait a minute. Just... Now, other than this uh, Sherlock Holmes theory of yours, we have no evidence of anybody you being here with You had no it. evidence, period, because you let those CIA guys with the degrees and the pedigrees walk all over you. I told you they said it was a question of national security. You don't know that. Now, let me tell you something about Tom Bingham. He was a professional. He wouldn't use a 22 pistol like that and risk blinding himself or turning himself into a vegetable. Now, you may not like hearing it, but your people have slopped all over a murder case here. your mysterious horse theory. The hell it does. The stray doesn't graze in one place. He wanders. The horse I'm talking about was tethered. He worked good, didn't he, Kurt? Yeah, very nice indeed. Come here. Kurt? Come on. Oh, Frank, come meet another friend of Tom's. Mike Danvers? Frank Tom. Hello. Oh, well, sure. I know you. <laughs> Tom talked about you often. Yeah? Well, I've heard a lot about you, too, Mr. Danvers. I think perhaps that's where we should have him talk. You gentlemen, excuse me. I'm going to treat my friend here to a drink. You want something? No, thank you. I don't believe so. I understand you're conducting an investigation of Tom's death. Did you find anything? Yeah, big fat footprints all over the case. I think some of them are yours. <laughs> well, you're certainly direct. Saves time. All right, what can I do to help? Tell me who killed Tom and why. Who said he was killed? Now, come on, you were out there. You and this guy Barrett have seen everything I have, and you're both pros. No, the way I figured, someone was waiting in Tom's plane. He forced him to take off and fly to that meadow. Whoever it was, he killed him and faked the suicide. Well, it could have happened that way. It could and it did, but they used Tom's gun. That means it had to be somebody who had access to Tom's house. Somebody stole it. What did you find at the house, you and Barrett? Jimmy, let me have a brandy, will you? I want to talk to Barrett and the others. Your old spooks club. Old spooks? Who calls us that? I do. When can I meet them? You can't. Forget it. Wouldn't do you any good even if you did. Look, it's all very simple, really. I was with the Central Intelligence Agency almost 20 years and took an early retirement, just like Tom did. It was the new broom. You know, all of a sudden we were all dispensable. It was damn hard coming out, too. All of us lived for so long in a little cocoon, the whole company did. We drank together, we talked together, we slept together. It was incestuous. Yeah, I know. Old spooks stick together. You're damn right, and why not? And now, with Tom's death, all right, his murder, I, I think he got that about figured out right. All right. It shook us all up, everybody. I mean, who's next? We don't know. What was it, new business, old business, the Russians, Cubans now? Well, we take care of ourselves now, because nobody else will. You better forget about this conversation, too. 
Nobody's gonna give you any cooperation, sir. You're an outsider. Come on, Barrett, the others. They're not gonna give you the time of day. How about you? How come you're so talkative? <laughs> exactly. Why? I don't know. Maybe I'm starting to think of things a little different. That's all. Want one of these? That Lana Richardson. Yeah. You know her? No. I'm about to. Richardson? Oh. My name's Frank Cannon. Ah, uh, hey, you ride this thing pretty good. Well, give the thing a little credit. <laughs> I'd like to talk to you. You are? Yeah, but I'm getting a crick in my neck at the same time. What would you like to talk about? Your relationship with Tom Bingham. You've had your talk. And Nichols Pickle is fifth. And now to the clubhouse turn, it's Laura's dad and Corey's choice battling heads apart. Corey's choice on the outside, Laura's dad the rail. Then a gap of three lengths back. Russell Rooney follows in third by a neck. Pamela Bamela in fourth by seven. And Nichols Pickle is fifth. Corey's choice in front by a neck. Laura's dad second on the inside by a length and a half. Russell Rooney is third by two and a half lengths. Pamela Pamela following in the center of the course is fourth, and Nichols Pickle is fifth. As the field races around the clubhouse turn and heads to the back stretch, now Corey's choice. Just a minute. In front, Laura's dad in second by three and a half lengths. Rosso Rooney in third by a neck. Pamela Pamela gaining on the outside and takes over third. Well, hello. Hello. I hope I didn't scare you. Oh, that's hardly the word. Won't you come in, please? Thank you. I was rude today. I'm sorry. Ah, oh, people have been rougher than that to me, Mrs. Richardson. My name is Alana. Could we talk? Certainly. Tom was a very nice man. I'd like to help you if I can. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. But I'm sure we can find a more comfortable place than this. Well, I'm not uncomfortable here. <laughs> you know, since we've just become great friends, it would be a shame to ruin it with our first quarrel. Shall we go? <laughs> Members of this club have a lot of privileges. Everything but privacy. <laughs> you see, by tomorrow they'll be saying we're having an affair. Did uh, Tom come in here with you? Yes. Not very smart, I know, but uh, I don't care. I do what I please. <laughs> well, I guess that answers <laughs> my first question. Oh, we had an affair. It wasn't very private. How serious? How long? Not long, not serious. Not on my part, anyway. He was a very sweet man. I, I suppose he was exciting to me at first, being an ex-spy. You went to Costa Rica together. Good Lord. 
But you have been checking up on me, haven't you? Yes, it's true. I've been there before, with others. It's the kind of place that Tom would have liked. The fishing's really sensational there. Yes, he was always out chasing Marlin. It was hard for me to compete. And I'm sure it was. He was... He was a sensitive, kind man. I haven't been able to get it out of my mind. Get what out of your mind? The thought that... that maybe I had something to do with what he did. He didn't do anything. He was murdered. I'm sorry. You're not as tough as you pretend to be, huh? Who is? Are you sure about Tom being murdered? Yeah, I'm sure. You know of any enemies, any Old lovers of yours, oh, maybe? No. No, I like men, they like me, but it never comes to that. I appreciate your talking to me, Alana. I can use all the help I can get. You know, there was something that happened. What? Well, Tom and I were here one night. It was, it was very, very late. And this man came up to us at the bar. He was... Really drunk. Tom tried to get rid of him, but finally we had to leave. I don't know, I think I remembered it because I never seen that side to Tom. I thought they were gonna have a fight. No, Tom never liked drunks. No, that's not the point. No, they knew each other. They worked together in the CIA. I didn't hear everything they said, but I did understand that much. Do you know the man's name? Chuck. I heard Tom call him Chuck. Sunny, my son. Please, sir, for these tatami rooms, you need reservations. Oh, now my one and sorry this is a private meeting well this is frank cannon one of Tom's... yes i know who it is which one of you is chuck you've been misinformed cannon chuck kirkland doesn't belong to this group he never did asking you to leave mr cannon Can we call the police or we throw him on ourselves. Where can I find Chuck Kirkland? No one here is going to talk to you. You might as well understand that. Well, maybe I have the wrong room, then. I thought there were some friends of Tom Bingham in here. He was murdered. You all know that. But I guess you don't give a damn. Just following orders like good little soldiers. And... It's just possible that some of us knew Tom even better than you did. What does that mean? It means that his death is more our business than yours. So if you want to help, you better get out of here and quit causing trouble. Or it might mean that someone here is covering up a murder. Or committed one. If you see Kirkland, tell him I'm looking for him. Supposed to be getting your license plate number. 
Don't bother. Somebody already checked out my car at the motel. Really? Well, that's not us. Why do you want to see Chuck Kirkland, anyway? You expect me to answer that after what happened in there? Listen, those are all good men in there, every one of them. They're just doing things their own way. So am I. Where is Kirkland? Barrett picked up a note off of Tom's desk when we were at his house. I think Kirkland slipped across the border. He's at the Hotel Rosales in Tijuana. All right. Now listen, you better keep an eye on Kirkland. I mean, he's killed people. He's well-trained. I think he's a little... No, I mean, he's a little squirrely, if you know what I mean. Thanks. <laughs> I guess maybe I do. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. There you go. There you are, young man. Muchas gracias. Keep an eye on it, too, will you? talk to you about Tom Bingham. Oh, I know. You want to ask me why I killed him. You really killed Tom Bingham, huh? Did I say that? Well, I'm borracho. Drunk. Or at least I hope I am. Maybe you're lucky that you are. Hey! Vete! Estoy aquí para the Goodbye. Welcome to the safe house. You were in the CIA with Tom? That's right. He was my station chief. He ran me. Oh, do you know what that means? Well, it means, man, that I ran and ran and ran. You're kind of young to be pensioned off, aren't you? Pensioned? You get no pension. Got the shaft, cashiered, sacked. Why? Oh, no, that's classified. I'm uh, your regulation burnt out case. Uncle Sam, he wanted my body, but not my soul. What about Wilson Barrett, Mike Danvers? Did you know them? Oh, sure. They were my superiors. Every day in every way. I eat their guts. Any particular reason? Yeah, because they... They were so nice to me. They tried to help me. They didn't get me a job. They tried to keep me sober. All very good reasons to hate them. Did you hate Tom Bingham, too? Him especially. Why? Ask his daughter. Jessica? No, Tom didn't think I was a proper suitor for his precious girl. Can't imagine why. What would you do if you knew that I killed him? Probably throw you over my shoulder and haul you back across the border. <laughs> Where were you the day Bingham was killed? Well, now, let me see. Uh, I don't remember things as well as I used to. I must have been ripped, as usual. You know I'm going to find out. 
try. Good reflexes. Charles Kirkland. He was here. That's his book in photo. As one great mind said, pictures don't lie. Or maybe it was my wife. <laughs> maybe it was log wrong, huh? An honest mistake. Or a little mordida. Uh-uh. No offense, so. OK. But Frank, I saw the man here myself at the end of the day. He was here. Then he went out again, and, and, and then he came back again. I don't get it. He almost as much as told me he killed Bingham. I believe you have what we mystery fans call an Agatha Christie. You remember? I am one of our biggest fans. <laughs> yes, I remember. But I never understood it. Hola, Paco. Get hey, hey, hey. Muy bien, Berto. Muy bien, gracias. Yeah. You know, we don't get murder cases like that. What do we get? Bang, a gun. Whack, an axe. Then everybody confesses. A great right. mess. But very boring. <laughs> so, I want you to do me one more favor, if you will. Take this. I'm going to call you tomorrow, and I want you to give me that message. The telephone is tapped. Right. Good. Very good. <laughs> it's just like an Agatha Christie. Something the great Hercule Poirot would do. Ah, uh, Salvador. It's good to see you again, mi gran amigo. Good to see you. <laughs> Notes famous. Frank, this. All friends are the best. Some great minds said that too. Probably your wife. You love this man. Don't you look where you're driving? What? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, if it isn't Mel's garage, when did you join the Marine Corps? guys work me over because I'm starting to make progress. Somebody's frightened. Jessica, uh -huh. how well do you know this Kirkland guy? Because he mentioned you. Huh. I met him once. He came out here to see Dad, and uh, then he called me a couple of times after that. Uh -huh. He wouldn't take no for an answer, so finally Dad really had to come down on him. You never, uh, ah! Uh, you never went out with him, huh? No. Uh -uh. OK, I figured as much. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, you know, getting beat up always makes me very hungry. How about some scrambled eggs, huh, kid? I, I have to say first. What? I'm, I'm sorry I made you get into all this. I had no idea that it would turn out this way. <laughs> How old are you now, kid? 20, 21? Almost 22. Almost 22. Well, then you're old enough to know that nobody makes anybody do anything, okay? Your father was my friend, your mother is my friend, and now I got a chance to be your friend. So you see, I... <laughs> gonna be a big winner all the way around. <laughs> thank you. Hey, you can thank me for getting those scrambled eggs, because I want to talk mm. to your mom. Okay. Out, okay. out. Okay, I was raised on secrets. <laughs> I understand. What is it? Do you know who killed Tony? No. No, not yet. Kirkland's mixed up in it, but there's somebody else. They're professional, they're well organized, and if I didn't know better, I'd say I was up against the real thing. CIA? No. It's a damn good imitation. Uh, incidentally, Sally, you can forget about Tom having an affair with Alana Richardson because it did not happen. How do you know? Well, I set a little trap for her. She started to tell me how they did have an affair, did go to Costa Rica together and all that stuff. So I mentioned to her about how Tom would have loved it down there because he was such a great fisherman. Tom hated fishing. You and I know that, but the Richardson woman didn't. Thank you. I, I know I shouldn't care, but I do. They were in Costa Rica at the same time, but not together. Tom was following her. 
He was back in the game somehow. Frank. Yeah. Tom kept a scrapbook on international horse shows. Uh-huh. And I was going through it and found this. Yeah. He always said the best place to hide anything was the most obvious. Turn it over. It's from Costa Rica. Does it mean anything? Does it mean anything? You know who this is? This is Leon Vincent. The government's been after him for years, and he's in Costa Rica. Why? What did he do? Oh, embezzlement and fraud originally. Vincent got away with millions. He would move every time the feds were about to extradite him. Then a couple of years ago, Vincent financed a revolution in the Caribbean. It failed, but his mercenaries killed a lot of people, including women and kids. Well, how could Tom have been involved with this Vincent? That's what I'm going to find out. <laughs> Inspector Cruz, por favor. Bueno. Now. Frank Cannon. Frank, wait, 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 wait a minute. I got news for you. The man you were looking for is willing to mention tonight. He has information about Kirkland and the others. Oh, good. So where? The parking lot next to the pavilion. Next to the pavilion. All right, thanks, Sal. I'll be in touch. Good luck, man. What are you doing here? The park's closed. What in the world happened to you? Well, I had a little dust up with some Marines in Tijuana. Uh, listen, you know a guy who handles horses for Alana Richardson? Latin, got a beard? Yeah, a guy hangs around, a little guy? Yeah. You don't know anything about him, huh? No, not really. Why don't you ask her? Well, that's my next step. What about Chuck Kirkland? Did you find him? Yeah, I did. He knows something about Tom's murder, too, but he's got an alibi. That's why I wanted to see you. Did Kirkland ever work the Caribbean station? Yeah, I think uh, he might have. Did he have anything to do with Leon Vincent? Vincent? Frank, I don't think we can talk about that. Mike, I'm not asking for anything classified, you know. But I think Tom was investigating something to do with Leon Vincent. That's why he went to Costa Rica. Look, if he went to Costa Rica, Mike, I think we better talk. Have you been following me? I think I'm the one that's been tailed. Did you bring the Marines this time? You're way out of line, Mike. You're breaking discipline. Well, we're not in the company anymore. You've got no business giving this man information. He's a friend of Tom's. He's trying to help. You're looking for some big trouble, Mr. Cannon. In fact, it looks like you already found some. That's right. So far, I've been lied to, followed, conned, and beaten up. Now, I don't know how much you've had to do with that personally, but here's a warning for you. Either you lay off or I'm going public with this. I mean the media. 
and the Senate Subcommittee for the Investigation of the Internal Affairs of the CIA. I know how to play rough, too. I don't know what you're talking about. Now, this in my motel room. I think it belongs to you. I don't use electronic surveillance. It's illegal. So's jaywalking. Mike? You'd better listen to me. I don't think so, Will. I don't think we have any more to talk about. I'll tell you everything I can. I don't know how much good will be for you. The CIA has been keeping an eye on Vincent. They've been doing it for years. They knew that he used some of the money that he stole to help bribe foreign officials. And then when the coup happened in the Caribbean, which he helped finance, that made it their business. Chuck Kirkland worked the Vincent case. Excuse me. Are you uh, Mr. Cannon? Yes. Telephone. Thank you. Hello. Frank, I'm frightened. What is it? It's Kirkland. He came just a while ago. He wanted to see Jessica. I wouldn't let him in. I think he's still outside. Keep your door locked. I'll be right there. I'll tell you this just once. You stay away from here, you stay away from Jessica and her mother. Is that understood? You're a good actor, Kirkland. You must have been a good field agent. You're not crazy and you're not drunk any more than you were the other day. You're a stall and a diversion. You mean I wasn't drunk? What a waste of good tequila. You got yourself thrown into jail deliberately, the perfect alibi, because it's true. You didn't kill Bingham, but you know who did. And you're covering for someone, someone who needs to buy time. Who do you think it is? The Chinese? No, Leon Benson. Who is he? You know. With all those millions, you probably call him Mr. Vincent. Oh, I'm not the one who's crazy. Yeah. Get back in there. Don't you come back here. I do. It'll be to see you. <laughs> Sure. He's gone. Kurt, I'd appreciate it if you could stick around. I don't think you'll be back, but it's possible. Of course. I can't believe he'd really hurt us. We better listen to Frank. He's had experience with this sort of thing. Don't worry, Frank. If he comes back, I'll deal with him. No, I don't want you to deal with Kirkland. You're not qualified, Doc. He plays a game you know nothing about. It's a game without rules. Don't fool with him. If he comes back, call the cops. Are you leaving? I have to. May not look like it, but I think we've got him on the run. What's going on, Frank? I wish you'd tell me. Was one of your employees out on a truck of yours last night? I don't know. Small man with a beard. Latin, I think. First time we met, he was handling your horse. Luis. Luis Barrientos. He was my trainer. He was your trainer? <sighs> yes, I fired him this morning. Why? He just wasn't doing his job. He was never there when I needed him. In fact, he was out last night. There. Is that what you mean? That's it. I didn't know he took the Bronco. I want to talk to him. You know where he went? Where can I find him? I don't know. He just got very annoyed and took off. Who are his friends? Frank, is it possible? Uh, do you think that Luis killed Tom Bingham? Yeah, it's possible, all right. I wish you'd tell me that sooner. Amana, do you know, is this Barrientos a Costa Rican? I don't know. What a strange question. Be a hell of a good question. Get the answer. He 
was looking for Luis. You gotta stop fooling around with him, Alana. You don't have to worry. Luis is far beyond his reach now. That's not the point. Cannon knows far too much about everything now. Well, what do you want to do? Terminate him. Listen, darling, that's not necessary. Everything's going all right. Anyway, we don't have that much longer to wait. Come on, let's go in and have a drink. Steady both our nerves. There's nothing wrong with your nerves. You have to be a flesh and blood human being to be nervous. Chuck, you say the rottenest things about me. Haven't I been good to you? Yes. But for me or him? Does it make any difference? No. Not really. I want to thank you for staying with the ladies. I appreciate it. All problem. We bachelors live for home cooking. <laughs> This uh, Kirkland sounds like he's disturbed. You think he'd come back? Oh, I'll be here. Good. She won't show it, but this is hard on Sally. You like her, don't you, Kirk? Sure. Quite a bit. Does that make me a suspect? <laughs> it might. Now, I think that makes you one, too. <laughs> Good night, Frank. Good night, Kurt. Are you going to spend the night here? Well, I guess I'd better. <laughs> Sally, it's uh, getting too comfortable here. I'm beginning to like it too much. So do I. Frank. Frank, there's somebody outside. What? Up by the stables. All right. Sally, have you got a gun? Yes. All right, get it. And then turn off the outside lights. Both of you stay here. It's me, Frank. I just saw Kirkland going to the barn. So I doubled back to warn you. All right, go back to the house and call the police. But tell Sally who it is. She's got a gun. Kirkland? Dead. Yeah. I think I got a problem here. He doesn't have a gun. No gun. We searched the whole area and there is no gun. Yet you said a man shot it. Do you want to explain that to me? 
The people in the house said they heard shots. No, they said they thought they heard shots, and nobody could tell how many. I mean, it's pretty far from the house. Sergeant, does this guy get paid by the hour? You better listen to him, Cannon. Serious business. Cannon, you may have been a hotshot with the LAPD and a big-time private detective, but all I see sitting in front of me is just a guy who was found standing over a body with a gun in his so hand. I'll skip the theatrics and get on with it, will Come you? Come on, you got to admit, you had a certain amount of grief with this guy a couple hours before you killed him. Look, if I shot every jerk I met for being a jerk, I'd have been out of this business a long time ago. How is it you used soft-nosed bullets in your gun? It's been almost an hour since you asked me that. I do not use soft-nosed bullets. If I did, the other bullets in my gun would be soft-nosed, all right? You could have switched. Ballistic said the one you used was soft. They get very cranky if they don't have a nice, clean bullet to analyze. No crankier than I am. Look, Pearson, if you had a nice, clean bullet, you'd know it didn't come from my gun. Then I could go to the beach or Paris they or said anywhere it was else the same I caliber want to, right? The same caliber 38. They're guessing! I don't have enough left of that bullet to make a judgment. Look, I have been in this business a long time, and this is the scabbiest... What was that? How do you explain all these inconsistencies? How the hell many times do I have to go through this? All right, I was set up, hmm? Somebody shot at me in the dark. They probably used blanks so you wouldn't find their bullets anywhere, right? They killed Kirkland with these blanks, did they? Kirkland was killed outside somewhere and dragged or carried into the stables. You said yourself he had powder burns. He was shot by somebody he trusted. Then after I fired back, they went out the door right behind where you found his body. Now there it is, and that's the last time I am going through it. Well, who did all this, huh? That I can't tell you. Why not? Because I don't know. But you have suspicions, and I want to know what they are. I can't tell you that either, because it's my case, and I have a right to protect the people I represent. And I have a right to hang you out to dry. I think the time has come, then, for you to either book the suspect or let him go. Huh? I'm not going to book you, Ken. I'm going to give this stuff to the DA. I'm going to let him charge you. Thank you. Now may I go? Yeah. But just don't leave town, understand? Of course. I understand. <laughs> See him? Who? Leon Benson. Yeah, I know who he is. I know who you are. Where are you, paparazzo? We work for magazine newspaper. Great lads. Here's the payment for your next picture, Leon Benson. Uh, uh, muchas gracias, amigo. But I hope you're not in a hurry, you know? You see that monster over there with a the large square head? Is that where Benson lives? All face, all the way down to the sea. All his. But no one ever allowed, you see? They have more monsters over there like that one. To go down that path, their job is to take your body apart, piece by piece. Have you ever seen him? Ha, from here, you see, but it's too far away. Uh, you see, when you enlarge a picture, it's too much grain. No good, no good. No one has ever been able to take a good picture of him for over a year. But he goes to the hospital once a week. So maybe one of these days, he's going to stop, smile for me, and pop, I get him. The hospital? What's the matter with him? Is he sick? Sick? Fine, muchacho. For a long, long time. You know, my friend, all that money, all that money, can't help them. Here it comes. Ah, no good. 
good, no good, you see? No, go ahead. Take your pictures anyway, huh? You've been paid for it. Okay. Uh, get, get me a shot of the little guy. Who? The small man, the one with the beard and the dark glasses. Senorita! Excuse me. Do you speak English? Oh, yes, of course. Uh -huh. I think maybe you dropped your key. Oh, but I don't stay in this hotel. But you do work here. <laughs> yes, sometimes. Hmm. Well, in that case, this must be your key. <laughs> My name is Inez. My name is Frank. So then after I left the convent, I went to a very great university. And then my father died. The greedy uncle took all of our money. Duh. So, you know, being from a very old and distinguished family, I, I couldn't be expected to work in a shop or something. Of course not. What choice did I have? Inez, you have touched me deeply. That's a very sad story. I think so. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, you could pay a hundred dollars? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> What do you know about this man, Vincent? Mm. He's very rich. What else is there to know? Okay, hundred dollars, and you can keep your dress on. Who are you? I saw you doing the little nurse number. Vincent must require some rather interesting medicine. Huh? Oh, look, this is very dangerous for me. Hey, you don't let have to go now. Go. I'm not going to harm you. I'll give you this. Just let me go. You ripped this off, huh? Everybody's taking things. The guards, the servants, the other girls. The other girls? I thought he was supposed to be so sick. <laughs> you want to call it that. He has a girl in every day. My day was today. Okay, Inez. Tell you what. Let's make it $200, huh? Uh, <laughs> no, no, I mean $200. Come on. Come on. Bueno. <laughs> now we can speed things up, huh? <laughs> so, they're moving out of the compound, right? Everything. You should see the paintings, the jewelry. Where are they taking it? I don't know. And what about the big honcho, the guy who's supposed to be sick but isn't? He goes to them. That I don't know. I don't understand. He, he said something very strange today. He said he was going to die soon, and then he laughed. If it was me, I wouldn't laugh. Hey! Freelance! Apurate, apurate! Hey! Don't you want them? You pay for them. <laughs> and they say paparazzi have no honor. Yeah, we got honor, so do thieves. You know anything about this guy? No, not by name, but he used to train Vince's horses for him. He had a big ranch once. Oh, well, thanks. I appreciate it. I suppose you want to get back to work. No more, amigo. I'm leaving just like you. How come? You giving up? I'm not giving up. The game is over. Vince is gone. What do you mean? How come you didn't know? They're all gone. Adios. The place is empty. Where did they go? Last night, I guess. Who knows? Nobody knows. When or where? Hasta la vista, amigo. Hasta la vista. Hi. Thanks for picking me up. My pleasure. 
You think you were followed? No. The police did come by the house looking for you just after you called. Well, it doesn't matter now. Is he there? Yes. have led them to you. I'm sorry. Hey, it was Tom who was in this business, not you, remember? Hit the position. Ah, oh, come on, Hit it. If you're looking for my gun, try your desk. Don't move and don't give me any more of your smart mouth. Now, just a minute, Lou. What does he think he's doing? You're busted. Back off. Have you got a warrant? Not yet, but I don't need one. The hell you don't. You can't tell me to do anything and make it stick with a warrant. I'll think of a you charge when I get you back to the station. I told you not to leave town. You won't do this the hard way. Keep your hands off me. Now, just a minute, officer. He did not leave town. He has been with me at my house. Mrs. Bingham, we just saw you pick him up at the airport. Well, I dropped him off to pick up a schedule. Now, believe me, he's been with me the whole time. I'll testify to that. Now, Lou, you know I've got friends. OK, lady. But when I tell the DA that you lied for him here, he's going to wonder whether or not you didn't lie for him the other night. Watch what's coming out of your filthy mouth. I'll be There's back a... for you with a warrant. And we'll get to do our little dance again. Let's go, Sergeant. Ma'am. Well, that couldn't have been too easy. Not so bad. Well, you surely do put excitement into a poor lady's life, Mr. Cannon. <laughs> you know, he's not kidding. We've got about two hours to do what we got to do. Let's go. Okay? Yeah, sure. Police are by this morning looking for you. Where have you been? Costa Rica. Costa Rica? Why? Well, I can't tell you everything now, but I know why Tom was killed. It has to do with a man by the name of Leon Benson. You ever heard of him? Sure. Read about him. Fugitive, isn't he? Yeah. Worth millions. Tom was killed because he discovered a link between Vincent and some people here. You mean Kirkland? Kirkland and others. Well, what are you going to do now? Can you prove anything? Not yet, but soon. Vincent has left Costa Rica. He's either here now or on his way here, and he's bringing a fortune in with him. Here? Are you sure? Yeah. But I can't bring the police in yet because I don't have enough evidence. I don't want just Vincent. I want everybody that was responsible for Tom's death. And I need your help. Of course. I'm going to have to stay here till dark, and I'm going to need an unrecognizable car. Could you help me? Well, I can rent a car in town. I'll be back in an hour. Great. Here are my car keys. If I'm not back by 9 o'clock and I don't call by then, you get the police, huh? Thank you. 
move. Careful, Frank. I've never shot anybody before, but I will if I have to. You may not have shot anyone, but a hell of a lot of people have died because of you, haven't they? I will be in just a few hours. It will be sudden, after a long illness. Brief announcement, quick cremation, private ceremony, the death certificate already written and paid for. And the dear sweet country horse doctor will survive. You really took me in. Yes, I thought I had. What about all the money, the millions that you stole? What is the warm, wonderful, and kindly Dr. McDonald going to do about that? I suppose you intend to leave it all to charity. I don't intend to do anything with it except keep it. It arrives tonight, right here. So you see, Cannon, you can take it with you. Tom Bingham found out about it, so you killed him. I didn't know that was going to happen. You can believe that or not. Sir, stay here. He followed me. Damn it, William. I told you to stay away from here. Did the Costa Rica. He figured it out, everything. Why, Frank? Why the hell would you just leave it alone? Because you killed a friend of mine. Hello, Alana. Mike, no more. No more killing. It's too late. This car must be around here someplace. We saw it. We had it moved. Honey, I want you to go back to the house. If the police come, fine. Tell them Cannon and McDonald were here, but that they're gone. They went to San Diego. No. The big thing is, you keep them away from me. Mike, please. Listen. I do not have time to fool with you now. The plane will be here in four hours. Mike, please, let's get out of here. Get out? What happened? You thought this was pretty exciting stuff up front, huh? Not anymore. Mike, I love you. No. Please, come on. You do not scratch an operation after it's gone this far. Now, you do as you're told. I'll pick you up when this is over. She doesn't realize what's at stake. Money. More than you can imagine. Was that it, Mike? You killed Bingham and Kirkland, now me, for money. Alana has plenty of that. Let me see the action of the game. Some game. People get hurt. <laughs> six months after I left. And I suddenly realized that I was going to be an outsider for the rest of my life. A stranger in somebody else's country. It was like prison in reverse. But I was locked out. Here I had all the money in the world, and it didn't do me a damn bit of good as far as that goes. Very touching, a man without a country. Oh, I could live with it. But eventually they'd have gotten their extradition papers through, and it would have started all over again. And would have made a rush to another country. What's the good of money if you can't relax and enjoy it? So you contacted Kirkland. And he got me the Ambers. Kirkland was small fish. But Mike had been senior plans officer. Who could do the job better? It's all pretty crazy, I guess. But the way I was, what I was becoming, I didn't have as much to lose as you might think. Why don't you tell that to Sally Bingham? Yes, that's gone sour, I know that. How did you know who I was? <laughs> Lots of things. You really want to know? All right, piece by piece. Vincent and McDonald, same age, same build. They both love horses. Vincent gets sick and the good doctor shows up at exactly the same time. But the 
Fletcher, was you telling me you saw Kirkland going into the stables? Because he was dead when he was taken there. That was your big mistake. I can see that. Your double down in Costa Rica is a good look-alike, but he's got too much energy for a dying man. So I'm told. It was a good try. You had plastic surgery, right? Yes. I don't miss the old place. Too many memories. Yeah. What are you going to do with this one? They're going to kill us both, you know. Mike has no reason. I'm paying him a fortune. He isn't doing this for money. I know what you're trying, Frank. Forget it. No, I want you to think about it. Mike knows the game. One of you will always be a threat to the other one. He figures they're bound to catch up with you someday because you've got such a high profile. When that day comes, you'll plea bargain and hand him over. Mike killed Kirkland, didn't he? His partner? You don't understand. Kirkland was unstable. That's the reason the CIA had to let him go. He did that number with you so well because he was halfway there. Mike had to kill him. Yeah. Mike always does what he has to. Any problems? No, he's fine. Great. Boss? Better bring him. Plane, take him out over the ocean. He'll just disappear. They won't even find his bridge work. Just him, or is it me too, Mike? Give me your gun. Leon, don't be a damn. No, I mean it. I don't intend to just disappear. Leon, please. Meal. The baked Alaska was marvelous. Oh, thank you. If you like that, you should try my eggs florentine. You know, the best thing about them is that uh, maybe I can get you guys to stay till after breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, we have to leave. It's a long trip home. Yeah, I know. Hey, girl. Hey, Frank. <laughs> thank you. Oh. Ah, thank you, darling. You come see us? You betcha. I'll go get the